play games based on the internet. Pretty straightforward, no? <laughs> Tonight we'll be having fun with videos like this. Piper is one of my favorites, but for some reason she's never given us any eggs. Not as much fun as that chicken is having, but we'll try. <laughs> Let's meet tonight's panelists. <laughs> He's the co-host of the podcast Two Johns Don't Make a Right. It's comedian John Daly. <laughs> Hey, hey, uh, I'm John Daly. I'm in a three-way sexual relationship with Moshe and Natasha. And being on TV together is one of our ways uh, of making love. And she's the host of the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. It's comedian Natasha Legero. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You may have seen my show, Another Period. Also, um, I love the past, but not in a racist way. <laughs> <laughs> and he's currently on tour with his new memoir, Subculture Vulture, which comes out January 30th. It's comedian Moshe Kasher. Thanks. Hi, Taylor. Uh, I, I just found out about the three-way thing, and I'm, like, really not happy about it at all. <laughs> But I guess I'll say you can pre-order my book now, but I want you to be careful because you can still get pregnant from pre-order. <laughs> your jokes, and if you hear this noise, you get 100 points. These are the stories people are talking about on the internet today. Some people say love is dead, and to those cynics, I say, have you ever gone to Applebee's? <laughs> because love is alive when you're eating good in the neighborhood. <laughs> Applebee's, please sponsor us. This week, the popular chain restaurant introduced a $200 date night pass, which gives couples a $30 stipend every week for a date night for a year. Wow, ooh, everyone in here <laughs> loves Applebee's. <laughs> I can't tell what's more quaint, a cozy night in the corner booth or the idea that $30 is enough to have dinner in 2024. <laughs> the date night pass sold out in a record one minute, so comedians, since Applebee's is keeping romance alive, what are other ways a chain restaurant could save your marriage? Moshe. This date night, it's bareback steakhouse. <laughs> Natasha. Golden Corral's nude salad bar. <laughs> okay. Here's one for the internet. Feet. <laughs> yeah, we all have them. Some of us better than others. Check out my wiki feet. Pretty good. Pretty good. Brave TikToker at Christy Fritz and her partner are making news by becoming barefoot influencers. My husband and I have made the decision to walk barefoot indoors and outdoors. And since we've made that decision, we've gotten a lot of questions about it. A lot of people are worried about how dirty our feet are getting and if we're going to catch diseases from doing this. You will. You will catch diseases. <laughs> you ever see a video and you're like, I can't believe I'm not married? <laughs> so this, this looks like, the, like a couple that would... Uh, in front of each other. Oh, yeah. I can't tell what's more offensive, the barefootness or that white boy with cornrows. <laughs> I got one thing to say to these people. Call me. <laughs> you get, love three ways. Let's you get, love three ways. Let's get barefoot. <laughs> uh, unfortunately for us, they're not alone. There's an entire walking barefoot subculture. Oh. It even has a website called barefootislegal.org. <laughs> for these shoeless pioneers saying people are still bullied and discriminated against because they believe there are laws preventing them from going barefoot in public. There are no such laws. That is why we exist. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Not everything needs to be a movement. So, panel, give us some horrible things that no one should ever do that are technically legal. Moshe. Oh, I drink soup out of uh, used KN95 masks. <laughs> Moshe shaving his arms over our kitchen sink. Oh, God. 
We're supposed to be doing jokes, not just confessionals <laughs> about our life together. Extra points to Natasha for, for vulnerability. <laughs> for living with John. Getting a lap dance from a gentle, tender, older man. <laughs> In Nepo Baby news, T.I.'s 19-year-old son, King, is doing the most by doing the least. He made a bowl out of aluminum foil to avoid washing a dish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this made the news. <laughs> if I want a headline, I have to get a late-night hosting job from Stephen Colbert himself. <laughs> but congrats on your flimsy bowl, King. <laughs> Comedians, in the spirit of T.I.'s air, what are some creative ways you've avoided doing chores? Moshe. Oh, I married Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> John. I adopted T.I.'s son, <laughs> King. <laughs> and now I can't microwave any of my bowl. <laughs> Natasha. Dying in a fire instead of replacing my smoke detectors. <laughs> <laughs> Youth sports is an institution where kids learn valuable lessons in life, teamwork, motivation, disappointing your parents. <laughs> like with this vocal dad. Oh, who says that? Who does that? <laughs> who does that? What? No, you can't yell that at something so sparsely attended. <laughs> no. Yelling you suck at a children's basketball game? Are you trying to turn her into a comedian? <laughs> Panel, how would you heckle a kid? <laughs> I would never heckle a child because, as we know, children are our most precious resource. But if I were to heckle a child, I'd go, you think that's your dad? No, no, no. I'm your dad. <laughs> and he yells back, you stop! You stop! <laughs> Natasha. Save those tears for when your generation needs water. <laughs> oh, you hate the truth. <laughs> Moshe. My dad could beat up your dad, and he died in 2001. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha is in the lead with 500 points. 